2020 has been good to me, but I have taken my fair share of L's and today we're gonna recap them all. What's happening YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. If this is the first time you're touching down on this channel, welcome to Small Feet Big Heat. We talk sneakers, we talk streetwear, and everything in between. If you didn't already know, we are doing 12 days of heat miss over here, which means daily uploads from me every day, right up until Christmas. So if you're not subscribed already, I have to ask, what are you doing? You are definitely missing out. So go ahead and hit that button. Subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything else. Today, I am running down my top 10 biggest L's of 2020. That's right, we're gonna recap, relive my biggest failures. As you're watching today's video, let me know down below in the comment section what L's hit you the hardest this year and did you get any good W's because it couldn't have been all bad. But let's go ahead and jump right into number 10. So as you can see, number 10 is the Fear of God 1 in the Off Noir or String colorway. This is the first Fear of God that I've ever actually considered buying. There have been other colorways in the past that I wanted to get in hand to see how it looked, see how the sneaker fit and things like that because I was really interested in the Fear of God 1. But this is the first colorway that I actually followed, kept up with, and have been waiting for. I believe these were actually rumored to release earlier this year. I think during All Star Weekend, it never happened. I was really disappointed, but I know certain pairs did, you know, make it out. They made it out into the atmosphere, and because of that, I have been checking, you know, StockX, GOAT, things like that, to see if my size ever popped up, and it did once or twice for astronomical prices, and I knew that there would be a later release for the sneaker, so I just waited, and there was eventually a wider release. I think it was actually pretty recently ago that these released, and it was some type of secret release, something that only, like, Jerry Bull Boys and Jerry girls would know about. I don't really know the details whether it was an Instagram release or it was some type of shock drop type of situation so I missed out on them but the prices are a little bit more reasonable now and I'm not gonna lie I have been checking up on these on the resale market because it is a pair that I still really want and I'm interested in. I don't have any other Fear of God sneakers in the collection so this would be the first and I think it's a pretty strong colorway. It's my favorite colorway aside from the canary joints, the all over yellow ones. Now, if you're new here, number nine may seem like it's coming out of left field, but for my subscribers who know how much I love Air Force Ones, you know why this L hit me hard. The Air Force One craze, popularity, the hype around the model right now absolutely kills me at certain times. Things like this end up happening. So this was a collab between Elite, a high-end fashion and jewelry brand, and Nike. They came up with this all-black high-top Air Force One that features the signature Elite buckle instead of the usual straps now I thought that this collaboration was fire I love the buckle on these and I don't have any high top black Air Force ones and I would love to add these to my Air Force one collection however these retailed at $400 and I don't care how good the leather is what brands are involved or how big the hype is around the Air Force one I am never ever ever paying $400 for an all black high top Air Force One. You can get these for like $100 on the streets. It has never been that serious for me. I strongly believe that once the hype dies down, I'll be able to pick these up for under retail. So that's the moment I'm waiting for to strike. Until then, I will hold my L proudly because that's the thing about buying what you like. It doesn't matter whether I get it tomorrow or next year, I'm still gonna like it. It's something that I want and not something that the hype or the wave is pushing me to buy. Number eight is a New Balance, and there really shouldn't be too much surprise because New Balance was killing it this year, especially with the collabs. Now, this one in particular is one that really stood out to me. The textures of the shoe were just calling out to me, and that is the New Balance and Salehi Bamburi collaboration. Hopefully, I am saying that man's name right. If you are not familiar with Salehi Bamburi, he is the VP of men's footwear at Versace right now. Now, I don't know if that position came before or after these New Balances, but I I understand. 
I will just say that because he definitely has an eye for footwear. The way that these colors work together on this New Balance, he absolutely knocked it out of the park. And I think it goes to show once again, people don't have to be superstars like Travis Scott and Kylie Jenner to make a good shoe, to have a good collab. Of course, this shoe is going to be underrated and overlooked because it's not going to be as popular as the Jean Pair or the Amy Leon Door, but it's definitely one of the best New Balance collaborations to come out this year. A lot of people make the assumption that I only collect Jordans and New Balances, and yes, while that's the bulk of my collection, I do pay attention to a lot of other brands, and Reebok is one of them. This year, they had one of the best executed collabs, and that is their Reebok question, Bubba Chuck. I was on Nice Kicks trying to get these the day of, and it was an absolute shit show. I never even had a chance, but this is definitely, like I said, one of the best well-executed collabs of 2020. It definitely told the story of Allen Iverson, aka Bubba Chuck. It's a fishing inspired shoe, and you get that instantly just from looking at it. Now, unfortunately, as much as I like these, I think when people start putting their list together, you know, best of 2020, top 10, of 2020 i feel like this one is not gonna get the shine that it deserves but it is still a really really good shoe that released in 2020 and hopefully people remember it when they look back on this year's sneaker releases I am not above admitting when I make a mistake and missing out on the Jordan 1 Low Paris is definitely one of my biggest mistakes this year. I slept on these. Straight up, I slept on them because they were Jordan 1 Lows. I'm not usually a low fan. I've had maybe one, two pairs in the past and they both eventually became gym shoes because when it comes to the Jordan 1, I would just prefer a high. And if these ever released in high top form, instant cop. As soon as I saw the colorway on these, I knew that they were fire, but I slept because I thought they're Jordan 1s, they're not going to do crazy numbers on the resale market. So if I do change my mind and I'm really pressed and I want to get them, I'll always be able to pick them up down the line for a reasonable price. Boy was I wrong. Yes, these did reasonable numbers, 200, 250 for like the first month and then instantly, almost overnight, the price on these joints just started to skyrocket. Right now they're at $800, a price that I would just never pay for a Jordan 1 low. So right now these are just an L that I'm gonna have to hold for a very, very long time because I'm not dropping $800 on a Jordan 1 low. If you're still watching, we made it to the halfway point, you're a real one. Make sure that you like and comment on this video because it definitely helps the channel grow. Let's get into number five. Nike experimented with sustainability a lot this year, and one of the products of that was the Nike Space Hippie lineup. Out of those four original sneakers, myself, like a lot of others, were definitely drawn to the Space Hippie 3. That's the one that was definitely the most intriguing, the most interesting looking. I was really interested in like the fastening system, so I really wanted to give these a try. Unfortunately, Sneaker Zap served me up a big, fat, steaming L on release day. Now since then, these have released in another colorway. I took an L on that one as well. So I just haven't been having any luck when it came to the Space Hippie 3. And that's really the only one that I'm interested in trying. I wanna get these in hand, try out that Crater Foam, see for myself if it's comfortable or not. But right now I'm stuck on which colorway to get. So let me know down below in the comment section, which colorway do you like better, the OG or the follow up? The Nike Spiridon was a really popular sneaker this year, especially during the summer. One of the colorways that I was really digging was this pistachio joint, but aside from that, the biggest L when it came to the Spiridon was definitely missing out on that Nike and Stussy collaboration. Now, I would have liked these in the cream or the black colorway, but the sneakers app wasn't having it. I wasn't able to secure either, and I took an L on all of the raffles. Now, this is one that I thought I would be able to reach back and pick up for a good price down the line because at first the prices were not too crazy but now they've definitely skyrocketed i do believe the prices will come down eventually it's just the hype of the shoe that's keeping the price at that point right now it's probably going to be a lot of people's sneaker of the year or at least in their top 10 and that's going to boost it a little bit more but i think we'll definitely see a cool off period and maybe i'll reach back and pick it up then now for this one, I may be speaking a bit too soon and I do hope that's the case because there are more colorways of these releasing this week 
and next week and that is the nike vapor waffle sakai i personally like this model a lot better than the last sakai collab but that being said i haven't been able to hit on any of them and i'm salty about it i'm salty i have taken an l on every nike and sakai collab i'm crossing my fingers that i'm able to secure one of these two colorways i know a lot of people think that they're weird but i personally like the weird stuff sometimes so these fit right into my style Number two was hands down one of the biggest L's that I've been served this year, but I'm sure a lot of people out there took this L as well, so I'm not alone. That is the Nike Ben & Jerry's Chunky Dunky. This sneaker, the hype around it was insane. It was a great collaboration. I have thought and fought with myself for the past couple of months about whether or not to pay resale for these right now because I know the price will only continue to go up. And the reason why I ultimately have not done it yet is because realistically, I don't know how much wear I would actually get out of them, especially right now, but I'm putting it out there in the universe. This is not an L that I will hold forever. Eventually, I am manifesting it. I will not only get the chunky donkeys, but mark my words, I will get the chunky donkey friends and family packaging because I love well executed collabs we've had a lot of great sneaker releases this year we still have half a month to go but the l that hurt the most and this may surprise some people for the people out there that really know me this won't surprise you at all but the l that hurt the most the l that broke my heart this year was the cactus plant flea market swarovski dunk i needed these this one was definitely an L I did not want to take. And I thought, I thought that that $500 price point would scare some people off. And maybe, you know, it would make the raffle a little bit thinner, a little bit thinner. But no, of course, the resellers were out and about. And there seemed to be very, very few pairs of these. And the resale prices are insane. Last time I checked, they were about 3400 and that's just something that I am never, ever going to pay for a sneaker. So this is going to have to be an eternal L if they stay at those prices. I know some people thought these sneakers were ugly. I don't think they were ugly. I will say they were definitely over the top, but I love shiny shit. So these were right up my alley, but very, very unattainable. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I took my fair share of L's, but 2020 has been good to me and I will be doing a 2020 pickups video that is right all of my 2020 releases in one video on foots for every shoe keep it locked because you don't want to miss that and as always like comment subscribe show us more youtubers some love and i'll check y'all in the next one